everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and yep, yeah, I'm sure you already know by now that Flynn sentencing was postponed, oh, until March 13th. Well, now, not necessarily, so let's just look at a few things, and I wanted to give you a little bit of insights that I found. I went to the 8chan boards, and some of the Anons there were thinking along the same lines as me, so I'm going to present that to you and see what you think about it. Okay, this article here just talks about some of the basics of it. And notice what it says. Judge Sullivan offered Flynn several times to postpone the sentencing and to give him the opportunity to withdraw his guilty plea. Down here you can see that it says a joint status report is due in 90 days, March 13th. So a joint status report, it means the status of the whole situation. But the part about this I want to point out, notice it says Flynn sentencing has been postponed. Flynn attorney Robert Kellner said they'll take Judge Sullivan up on the offer to postpone the sentencing. Now think about this for a minute. If you had the opportunity to withdraw your guilty plea and you've been saying that you were innocent all along, why wouldn't you take that opportunity? Hmm, interesting. And you'd take the postponement of the sentencing. Well, let's go on. General Flynn backed off from his theory that he was entrapped by the FBI and forced into a guilty plea earlier Tuesday morning. Mueller's prosecutor, Brandon Van Grack, told Judge Sullivan Tuesday that the special counsel was going to indict Flynn on the Turkish lobbying case unless he cooperated. So right here we're seeing another strong-arm tactic it's just so obvious. Again, this was bait to let them show who they really are. And who are they? We're going to find something on you and prosecute you in some way if you don't cooperate. That's really what's going on. But let's go on. Judge Sullivan then said to General Flynn of the charges against him that he arguably sold his country out. He called him a traitor right there. I mean, that is what that is. Sullivan offered Flynn several chances to postpone and said he had concerns based on Flynn's pre-sentencing filing. I cannot recall any incident in which the court has accepted a plea of guilty from someone who maintained he was not guilty, and I don't intend to start today. Interesting. Then it goes on, and again, Judge Sullivan offers Flynn a chance to postpone this sentencing hearing to rethink his guilty plea. Flynn replies, I appreciate that, but no, Your Honor. This makes no sense, okay? This really makes no sense if you're thinking about Flynn and everything that's going on. If he was guilty, he would definitely want to take the chance to say, no, I'm not guilty, so he could get off, right? But he's taking this. So let's go on. According to Sarah Carter, who was present in the courtroom Tuesday morning, Judge Sullivan has more questions about the special counsel's and FBI's conduct. Mike Flynn's sentencing postponed indefinitely with an update on March 13th. That's really what the situation is. His sentencing was not postponed to March 13th. It's postponed indefinitely. And if it's still going on, then March 13th there'll be an update. Judge Sullivan has more questions about the special counsels and FBI conduct. Okay, so I wanted to show this to you before we get into the rest of it, but that was the major event, and you all know that now, and I'm sure you've probably seen some different articles and things on it. Here's one that I wanted to point out to you. I'm not going to read all this. It is kind of long, and I'll post the links down below just like usual, and you can read it on your own. But this one suggests Michael Flynn is owed an apology. Now this actually was posted at 6 o'clock this morning, so that was before the hearing. And his entire policy, and this is Bloomberg, which is not going to be very conservative oriented, but this author says people are starting to put out the idea that he committed treason and that he's owed an apology for that. So down here he says, remember when Michael Flynn was a traitor? It was early 2017. Democrats were still stinging from their defeat at the hands of Donald Trump. Every day, it seemed, brought news of another contact between Trump world and Russia. Flynn, a retired three-star general, was forced to resign after serving less than a month as Trump's national security advisor. 
He was said to have colluded with Russians during the presidential transition. For this, he was defamed as a Russian agent and mocked as a bumbling Benedict Arnold. Former officials of Barack Obama's administration hinted that Flynn had been compromised. As it turns out, none of this is true. On Tuesday, Flynn will receive a sentence for the one count to which he has pleaded guilty, lying to the FBI. Special Counsel Robert Mueller has recommended no jail time. Flynn will have a chance to get on with his life. So I'm not going to go on with the rest of this because, again, it was before the sentencing hearing. It's just really interesting that he's saying, basically, look, he did not betray his country. And it's crazy for people to even say that. It's a good article. I think you need to read it. It's kind of surprising that people that say that he's a traitor owe him an apology. This is another article from Zero Hedge. Judge apologizes for suggesting Flynn is a traitor, delays sentencing. Now, I read you before that the judge implied he had sold out his country. But it says here, after what was, by all accounts, a contentious hearing, the sentencing has been postponed to give Flynn more time to what? Cooperate. To cooperate. It's giving him more time to cooperate. Hmm, and if you've watched my previous videos, you know that Flynn's plea deal has in there that he's participating in covert law enforcement activities. So he is working with law enforcement here. He has been testifying. He has been working with them. So they're continuing the operation. That's really revealing here. I love the way they said this. More time to cooperate because that was how it came across. After the judge hinted that prosecutors might have considered charging Flynn with treason, and so that is something that has never come out in the documents, and even in the 302s, I didn't see anything about that. So I think possibly that might have been under what was redacted. So I wonder if the judge kind of let that slip a little bit and wasn't supposed to, that that's something that they are talking about in the redactions. And remember, those 302s were done months after the conversation. So they're really not very valid. And you have to go to the original ones to find out what was going on. And in those, they said he didn't lie. Flynn agreed to take more time to offer more cooperation with authorities. And we know what he's doing. Yes, we do know what he's doing. He's cooperating with the authorities. So I went to the HM boards and I wanted to see what the Anons were saying. And some of them came up with different ideas. I mean, they just throw things out and then they see how other people receive them and if other people agree or not. This one takes the perspective that they didn't want Flynn or Manafort to testify. They didn't want a wand brought in. You see, they even tried to help him leave. Hence, it will improve important later why he was detained at the airport. It wasn't by accident. It was done so they could show you how they tried to scoot him off back to Pakistan so he wouldn't be extradited. Or so they assumed. Until a couple of months later when they watched Pakistan release a family they've held captive for a long time. For free and for nothing in exchange. While that release symbolizes many things, it also served as a whispered hmm, to Clinton, Huma, the Aberdeen family, and the Awan family because Pakistan isn't going to be bulldozed, exploited, and blamed by them anymore, especially when they know they don't pull the strings because Trump has made that clear. Anyway, this goes on and it kind of ties everything up and says basically, these people were in it for themselves, especially like Manafort and the Iwans. They were in it for themselves. Flynn doesn't care about people like Manafort really being around D.C., begging for contracts like ambulance chasing lawyers. Alternatively, Manafort would do anything to get people like Flynn to care about him, so that should tell you enough about both. The only thing that ties these two together is that they both worked for Obama, both worked for Trump, and both have a say about it. The only difference they share in those ties is that Flynn is doing it so the truth can prevail, even if he had to take it on the chin publicly for a little while and resign, face indictments over it. And Manafort is doing it because, honestly, it's just another shady deal he made, like all the shady deals he's made, selling out people to cover his butt if and when he's ever needed it, including today. So that's something to consider. That's one of the Anons. 
Another Anon came up with this. This is actually a good thing. Remember when Flynn was willing to testify months ago, but they didn't want him to? Flynn knows everything. He was in charge of NSA, remember? He was the National Security Advisor. He wasn't in charge of the NSA. That was Mike Rogers. But he was in charge of the DIA, which is the Defense Intelligence Agency. So I don't know if that's what that Anon means or not. I came to it a little late. I was going to ask for clarification, and uh, the board was already full. All of Obama's dirty secrets, and Hillary's too. He knows it all. By him pleading guilty, he has a chance to testify. By him testifying, he can expose absolutely everything. So this Anon pretty much is, you know, it's all about testifying. And if he can get him to testify, the testimony is going to be the important part. He says here, this Flynn story isn't important. It's the testimony that will come from it. That is important. It's why all of this is happening in the first place, and even Pence knows he's about to look like one giant lying backstabbing to Americans. But I disagree with that part, okay, because you know I still maintain that Pence is a good guy. Sorry, guys. I know there's a lot of people saying it. I haven't seen anything valid on that. I am looking into some of the links people have given me, but it's just not adding up for that. So I really don't think that's it. I think Pence knew that was the role he was going to play. I think Pence doesn't know the whole plan, but I think he knew that part. And so I think he was tasked with that part. I know people don't agree with me on Pence, but that's okay. That's still my opinion. I haven't seen anything that's changed my mind yet. This is another one that really is more along the lines that I'm thinking for the reason behind this. Thoughts on Flynn's sentencing. One of the interesting things that we saw from today's sentencing hearing was that for the first time, we have broached the subject of treason. While Judge Sullivan walked back those statements after the recess, the cat is now out of the bag. The mainstream media is going to run with the treason angle for the next 48 to 72 hours. They will not mention that it was walked back by the judge and the prosecutors. Now the genius of this happenstance is that the MSM will push this into the American home. They will define treason, then debate treason. They will make it a Christmas dinner conversation. This will create a national awareness that will backfire in the future when the spotlight has been cast on the transgression of the Dems and GOP establishment. The nation will be educated and therefore it will be hard for the MSM to say, well, it's different in this instance. So what this one's saying is, hey, you know, the treason is all going to be there and they're going to be spending so much time informing people what treason is, defining it, telling everything about it, that I think this Anon kind of hit it. This was what I was thinking, and I came across this, and I go, yes, this is it. And he quoted from 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 13. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. FISA to spy on Trump equals FISA for NSA to spy on Hillary. It ties all up at the bottom. Trump secretly recorded equals Hillary secretly recorded. Campaign manager Manafort equals campaign manager Podesta. Manafort trial equals Podesta trial. Cohen offices raided equals Perkins Cooey offices raided. Trump attorney client privilege waived by court. Hillary attorney client privilege waived by court. While they are doing all this to Trump and the media, Dems, and ACLU, no one is saying a word in protest. They won't be able to protest when it happens to Hillary. But the difference is there has been no dirt found on Trump. They're laying a foundation so that no one can object because they already did it all to Trump and found nothing. There will be plenty found at the DNC, Clinton Campaign, Clinton Foundation, DOJ, FBI. Wow, this is mind-boggling. That's what I think it is. I think that it's trolling. Trolling is fun. Treason is front and center now. Treason is on everyone's lips after today. Enjoying the show. I think this is it. 
I think this whole connection with the treason has to be at the root of this because they're setting it up so that Flynn will be accused of that. There won't be any evidence, but everyone will be talking about it for the next several days. And then when things start coming out with the FISA and everything, look out because the mainstream media has already defined what treason is and has laid it all down and oh they want to get those people who commit treason and then suddenly it's going to be them so i think this is another brilliant part of the plan this is what i think is probably true and this was my idea before i went into the eight cham boards and i was just so nice to see it confirmed in a couple different ways and the anons were agreeing with it that's what several of them think so that's what i've got for you today i want to thank you for stopping by and i'll see you all later